Hi, my name is Una Black and I'm from Letterkenny in County Donegal. Well, um, my husband was diagnosed in April of 2004 um, with colon cancer and it was uh, stage three and the prognosis was not good. Um, so after his operation, etc., he underwent uh, six months of intense chemotherapy. He went to Belfast, first of all, to get a pick line because not being in the capital or in Galway or that, we have to travel quite a bit. So that was a um, two and a half hour journey there, having the minor operation and coming back. Um, and then he had fantastic chemo services in Letterkenny. But it was chemotherapy for three days every two weeks and then being ill because it was um, oxyplatinum 5-FU was the treatment and it's very severe in the system so he was quite ill. Yes, he was self-employed, he had a garage business in Letterkenny and in fact many of the consultants in Letterkenny General were his best customers in that and they were exceptionally good to him, not because he fixed their cars but because they'd become friends down through the years and that. And he had, he was a one-man show and he loved his work, he's been a mechanic. Um, really since the age of four because his father before him was a mechanic and he'd built up this business and just loved what he did but because of the type of cancer that he had and the, the amount of strength and so on that he would need to do his work he wasn't able to do it so he had to get rid of the business and it took us quite a bit of time to do that but the major thing was when he went to get some state assistance sick pay it wasn't available and I, you know, I suppose I had never thought of it before because he'd been, as I said, a big strong man. Uh, but really, when we needed help, that help wasn't there. And because I was earning, a, I worked uh, at a senior, uh, <clears throat> a higher executive officer with uh, the Irish government, um, my salary was too high to warrant him being able to get any dole. And then, because of his prognosis, I made the decision that um, I would take early retirement because, to be honest, at the time, I didn't think he was going to live. You know, the consultant had spoken to me and more or less said to me, you know, do you know that this is very serious and so on? So, you know, you're kind of in a very emotional state and you make decisions that you rationally wouldn't make otherwise. So I applied for early retirement and took it back nine years ago now. And it's not a decision that I regret it, but it meant that our salary, or the, the income to our house just literally went down to about an eighth of what it was and still having the same outgoings. Now, I'm not crying poverty, uh, but and I'm probably better off than an awful lot of people, but I think it's an absolute disgrace in this country that people who work so hard being self-employed and pay all their, their contributions and pay their tax and so on and are honest, don't get anything. We, ne we didn't have a medical card, we had nothing. And in fact, we only got a, a, a medical card eventually because both of us were entitled to a part pension from the British government and I don't think that's good enough. I just don't think it's good enough. Well, I mean, even down as far as the very basic things, I was having to go to the hospital, not having to, I chose to go to Letterkenny General Hospital for maybe three, four times a day because I had to go, you know, during my coffee break and during my lunch break and stuff like that. And every time I went, it was like three euro in the car park just to park. He wasn't able to eat the kind of food because of the colon problem uh, that he would have been able to eat normally. So I was having to buy probably better quality food and, and I had to have the heating on in the house constantly. Um, like if it, he started his um, chemo in June, but we had the central heating on all summer. And you know, that was that cost, cost surely. Yeah. Um, transport uh, and, and certainly med medication and stuff at the beginning until we were able to get a medical card um, for him. Because the, the, I say, I think I mentioned to you when we were prepping this, that um, the first medical uh, sort of chemist bill that I had was 364 euro and I suppose because we'd been healthy I never encountered that before so it was um, a shock and as I said again uh, we had a few bulbs saved and so on and we were able to afford it but I don't know how anybody who doesn't have it 
can manage. It's ridiculous. Well, the first thing I would advise them to do is to find out what benefits they would be entitled to and to contact the Irish Cancer Society through the helpline or whatever and get advice because they're the specialists. They know, they've dealt with this all the time. Um, but I mean, you know, 11 years ago, I, I wasn't really thinking that straight and I'd never really been involved with the Irish Cancer Society. I would have, you know, bought my daffodils and whatever else and, you know, bought limes or whatever was being sold for them because I always reckoned it was a really good charity. Um, but I would certainly tell them, and, and now that we have a daffodil centre here, I'd be telling them to call into it and talk to the advisors there um, to see what help they, they could get. Well, I think we really should be lobbying the government to take that stupid regulation out. I mean, what is the difference between a self-employed person who's paying their tax and insurance and a person that's working in the PAYE system? You know, I just don't, don't get it. Um, and I also feel that there should be a wee bit more compassion shown to people. You're not firing in all cylinders, you know, like as a family. You're not firing in all cylinders during that time because first of all, you're so shocked and then you're into coping mood. Um, you know, I suppose that's really, it's a weird situation to be in and you think it'll never happen to me. And then you think you're having a bad dream and that you're going to wake up the next morning and it didn't happen. And I think